sad <laughs> sigh. <sighs> Forget him. We're talking about me. Me, 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 me. I'm the hero. What? He's a spork monster. Go, the spork, spork monster is here to fight the hero! I, uh, I think I left the fridge door open. Later, nerds. How dare you threaten me just as I was letting down my guard and connected with another chef on an emotional level. Be afraid! Be very afraid! Because I am a monster, see? <laughs> is he rhyming on purpose, or is it just a coincidence? But before you can discuss syntax any further, it's a turn-based fight sequence! What will you do? <laughs> I say defend. Defend Colonel Sanders. You decide to defend. Which defense will you choose? Repetition. You close your eyes tight, but then open one just enough to squint and see the spork monster across the battlefield. For some reason, this makes you feel more prepared for what comes next. Spork monster goes on the attack. They spit hot gravy at you. You take one damage. That lot of good that defense did. Attack. Defend again, attack. defend again! You decide to go on the attack! Um... Cook with love. love. Cook love. with love. Cook with love does one damage. Spork monster won't forget this. Spork monster focuses their mo their mashed minds and draws in energy from mother itself. They grow larger and more intimidating. How will you respond? Defend. You decide to defend. Which defense will you use? Buff up. up. You draw energy into your arms, thinking back on all the stirring you did in the kitchen as a child. Your muscles go super swole. <laughs> you're you're ready to take on anything. Spork Monster is no quitter. Buffed up and ready to rumble, they go on the attack once again. Spork Monster uses its utility tensile. <laughs> you take two damage from the attack. If you take much more damage, you're not going to survive this fight. Uh, mega attack. Yeah, attack. You decide to go on the attack. Chow down. Chow down does two damage. A powerful blow. Spork monster is oozing cheese sauce into oh. the lawn of the quad. I wonder who is going to have to clean that up. <laughs> Feeling vulnerable, Spork monster prepares for its ultimate attack. Rounded edge. Val villain, you're ready to tear stops here. Colonel Sanders summons the energy of a thousand chickens. Pot pie power pinch. Pot pie power pinch does ten damage. Whoa! Spork monster is defeated. You saved me. An injured spork monster spews steam into the night. Do we finish him or spare him? We spare the wretched beast. Spare. Spare. Him. It shows compassion. You manage to tamp down your disgust at the sight of this gnarly beast long enough to realize that he is still a living creature with a pure soul who deserves your pity, not your wrath. Be gone, beast! And don't you dare come back for a follow-up encounter tomorrow! That's foreshadowing. I don't <laughs> forget this! I certainly wouldn't be back like you said! The spork monster scuttles off into the night. Let's go, girl. <laughs> the defeated monster left behind a special item. It appears at first to be a cookbook, but upon closer inspection, it's much, much more. It's a book of magic spells with a golden chicken on the cover. You open the cover and find a library card tucked inside. The last name to have signed it out is Borco. Hmm. Borco. That name sounds strangely familiar. Your blood is pumping as you stand in the quiet of the night, holding the mysterious books in your hand. Dude, I'm getting some. As you come down from the battle buzz, you realize that your final attack has left you completely depleted. The world around you begins to fade away. Without any energy to keep your eyes open, darkness overtakes you. Take me, Colonel. The image of Colonel Sanders flashes your eyes as you must have helped 
He must have helped you get home. In your tired state, you don't know if you could have made it without him. What a guy. You want to thank him, but you don't have the strength to utter a single word. You feel your covers being pulled up over you as you get tucked in slightly. Tightly. Good night, my colonel. In your dreams, you're together with Colonel Sanders for some reason. Sprinkles is also there. Instructing your love. Dreams are weird. <laughs> you wake up one day two. One. Why did I say one? You wake up on day two and attempt to process the wild visions you had. Were they memories? Were they premonitions? You lie in the bed and stare at the ceiling, thinking about the secret you discovered while tasting Colonel Sanders cooking yesterday. <laughs> you can't believe he really uses cum. <laughs> and then there was that last secret ingredient that Colonel Sanders went ahead and told you outright. Not much of a secret, huh? Poop. It's probably just because he already trusts you so much. Sure, that makes sense. We'll go with that. You meet up with your bestie in front of the school. Before you can tell her about the encounter you had with Spork Monster, she launches into a, <laughs> she launches into a story of her own. Okay, I know this might sound a little strange, but I, I think I might be, uh, um, I think I might like Clank. Oh. You whore. Like, like him? Like, like, like? Wait, 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 wait. So is this gonna be the same story if she was with Pop? <laughs> oh no. <laughs> I know, it seems like I'm moving too fast, but there's, there's, there's something about him. I, uh, I, I like him. I like, like him. We go to talking after class, and he's actually, like, totally a sweet guy. Not only that, but he's, like, really smart. He told me all kinds of stories about Colonel Sanders. Did you know that Colonel Sanders was the most popular kid in his high school? No. But that does make complete sense. Yeah, but he was like so popular that they voted him prom king in a school he didn't even go to. And they also made it. They also had the convertible that he that he. What? He was also the convertible that he himself rode. He was also the convertible that he himself <laughs> rode in? I'm thinking maybe something <laughs> got lost in pressure cooker language translation there. Oh, okay. Either way, maybe it'd be best if we took it slow with this new boy. Like, I am with Colonel Sanders. You and Colonel Sanders? The coolest guy in the school? The most famous student to ever attend University of Cooking School Academy for Learning? You're a fool! We... Oui. Definitely connected yesterday. <laughs> sure you did. You're great. Why didn't he mean to you? I guess. Bitch. Wow. Laughing at the implication that you and Colonel Sanders might be a thing is definitely not cool. Aww. You are great. Thank you, narrator. You have an idea about how to prove that your love is real. Well, if he's not into me, why did he tell me one of his secret ingredients? However, you don't tell her that you know a second ingredient, too, which you discovered on your own. Your bestie's eyes light up. A, a, a secret... a secret ingredient? Yeah, I just said that. A secret ingredient. Is there a dramatic echo in here? Miriam checks to make sure you're alone before continuing. So, uh, this summer while I was on vacation with my family, a lovely man approached me in the botanical garden while I was wandering. This can't be good. He told me about his passion for spices. Secret spices. The man even gave me some. He told me what he meant. And he said, he, was, he said it was a powder created from a super, super duper rare dried cum. <laughs> And that if I did him a big favor, I could have some of my own! Oh no. Oh my god. <laughs> Please, Miriam. Don't tell me. <laughs> so I filled my suitcase with them and brought them home! <laughs> <laughs> he was so nice. He even met me at the gate when I arrived. Later, when I cooked with them, a very strange feeling came over me. And there was like... Oh, no. And the flavor was like... 
unlike anything I ever tasted. I think, I think you're being very liberal with the meaning of spices here. <laughs> Whatever. Anyhow, we both share an interest in cooking, so we stayed in touch, you know, like pen pals. I bet he would love to more know more about your new spices. My quality is going really far down. Mine Come too. On. Quality, please. Of well, the stream? Yeah, yeah, the stream. I don't know. Well. I thought it was just me. No. Well. It's me too. Well, I'm definitely not supposed to share Colonel Sanders' secret recipe. And besides, I only know one ingredient, so I doubt it'd be much use to anyone. Please, 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 please. It would mean the world to me. <laughs> no one has to know it came from you or Colonel Sanders. Do we tell her? Wait, Jacob. <laughs> you, you, you spoke out of term. <laughs> what do you think? Should you protect Colonel Sanders' secret recipe or share it with Bestie? All right, what are we gonna do? Choose. I don't know. The correct answer is is tell her a fake ingredient. Yeah, let's do that. You quickly think of a fake ingredient name. I don't know. How about come? It was come. <laughs> I know, it sounds like some old witch's potion, <laughs> but what can you do? I have knew- Wow. Her eyes light up with imagining such a thing, and you figure that you've des or satisfied her with curiosity, and she'll move. However, she immediately turns around and does the same thumb typing on her phone that you can't quite see. That's probably not good. Wow. Before you can ask her to confirm that she definitely is not texting the secret recipe to other people, you're interrupted. A wind rushes in. Cherry blossom petals fill the air. It's Colonel Sanders. He's arriving at school. <laughs> Do we stand back and admire him or run to admire. him? That's admire. That's too creepy. Run to him. Running to him is the correct answer. Colonel Sanders' horse is truly a thing of beauty. Without any any acknowledging that he's been being watched, he does a short horse dance before dismounting with a flourish. He then slaps the beautiful creature gently on its rear, sending it running free into the countryside. <laughs> Can we try because, to fix the quality, wait, please? Because you didn't run to him, now the other girl's gonna go run to him. Can, wait, wait, can we try to fix the quality? It's like I actually can't read that. Yeah, it's like 144p. <laughs> Boo. Three. There we go. Okay, much better. You are so struck by the sight of him that you lose the ability to speak coherently. Oh, I didn't realize anyone was watching. Don't worry. He knows his way home. You attempt to compliment Colonel Sanders, but the words don't come out exactly right. What a... Horseful butte you have. I mean, what a horseful butte you have. <laughs> Dang it. That's what I just said. <laughs> Being a good friend, Miriam attempts to cover for you. Oh, McSinofish just gets really nervous around people they like. Oh my god. What? That is not helping. I mean, they got food poisoning and we were up all night. It was gruesome. You shouldn't have seen it. What? <laughs> She gives you a wink and a smile as if to say, Situation handled. Can't blame a girl for trying. And with that, Colonel Sanders disappears into the school, leaving you and Miriam to fall. When you enter the classroom, you see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing... S oh, you see your two rivals, Ashley and Van Van, are doing something bad. By the way they're hiding, you know it must be really bad. Like counterfeiting recipes bad. Experimenting with extricted ingredients bad. Summoning a demon bad. You try and get a peek over Van Van's hulking shoulders. But he sees you coming. Yo, is there rule 34 for her, Ashley? There has to be. I'm I'm gonna Google that later. There has to be. <laughs> well there, little one. I'm not sure you're ready to handle this. Go. Why didn't you make like a bee and mind your own wax, honey? Do we tell them to stop acting immature, or act like you're not interested in them, and try to look closer? Huh. I don't- I don't know. I'm curious. I say we act. 
Okay. You sit near the rivals, but leave your back turned to them. You can even hear Van Van mutter something that sounds a bit like a magical spell. However, he notices you eavesdropping. He, you try and cover your tracks and improvise an excuse. Ahem. It's time for class, and you're distracting the rest of us who want to learn. Now you've upset them. Oh, and you're the emperor of cooking, are you? You make the rules? I'm not sure you know what a good meal it is if, if it ate you. Being the best chef in the world takes more than just culinary skills. It takes creativity. It takes panache. And it doesn't hurt to use a little evil. Evil. You finally get a look at what it is they're hiding and you instantly recognize it. It's a book, just like the one you found after your encounter with the Spork Monster. That's the same book that I found last night in the quad. Ashley immediately elbows Van Van, who hides the book behind his back. I don't know what you're talking about. This book is a family heirloom, and its contents are secret! You notice that they haven't just been studying the book, they've got Pop pinned to the wall and they're tossing potato skins at him as he tries to catch oh. them in his mouth. We're playing, hee <laughs> hee Before you can dig in any further, you're interrupted by the arrival of some student. It's almost time for class. Beep beep. Clank must be running late, he's in such a hurry that he... What? Hey, watch it! You bucket of bolts. You watch how you talk to him. He didn't do anything. Psst, womp. And who do you think you're talking to? I've never heard such language. Not even from a stand mixer. Womp, womp. No, your mother was a stand mixer. Whoops. Van Van jumps to attack Clink, but Clink shocks Van Van, sending him flying across the room. Protect me, Colonel Sanders. These crazed men are about to come. These crazed <laughs> men are about to come to blows. I think it must be over me, but I'm not interested in either of them. <laughs> <laughs>